Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with the live video from your webcam to create something interesting. To get a live video from the webcam, we can use a built-in method called create capture, which is part of the P5 DOM library. And DOM stands for document object model, which is an interface that allows us to define a layout of content on the browser by creating, adding, and modifying HTML elements. And we actually have worked with a few HTML elements previously, most frequently the canvas element, which we actually we call every time we call the setup function through the create canvas method. So actually the create capture method can capture both audio and video, but because we're going to be capturing the video from the webcam, I'm going to provide the first argument video inside the create capture method. So we just put in create capture and then video. All right, and let's click run. So usually there's going to be a pop-up box that asks you whether you would allow the computer to access the webcam. But because I have already clicked yes previously, so the pop-up doesn't come up for me. All right, so as you can see here, we have what? We have both the canvas here of the size 400 by 400. And then we have this box here, which is my video of a certain size. So how about we see what is the size of the video here? To do that, first I'm going to actually create a variable called vid, and I'm going to set vid to this function here, create capture. If I click run, it should still be the same. All right, so now inside the draw function, I'm going to get the size of my video, and I'm going to print it. All right, so as you can see here, the size is of the width of 640 and the height of 480. And then now, what if we want to draw the webcam data onto the canvas? We can actually use the function called image, and the source image will be our video, which is vid. And I'm going to provide the second and third arguments, which is where I want the top left corner of my video to be at 0, 0. So let's click Run. All right, so now we have the video here. Actually, the video... The original video is at the bottom, right? And then now this is us drawing the image from the video onto the canvas. But as you can see here, the size is a little bit too small. So what if I set the width to be 640 and then the height to be 480, which is the size of my video webcam. And then we set the size of the canvas to be the same. All right. And you can resize the video by just doing vid.size and then provide the new size that you want. Let's say I want it to be, how about 640 divided by 2 and then 480 divided by 2. And that's also going to impact the image that we draw on the canvas as well. So I'm not going to resize it right now. Another thing that we can do is that we can also actually provide a second argument inside the create capture function here which will allow us to flip the image flip the video so what we need to do is that we need to provide the second argument by putting in curly bracket here and then the word flipped a colon and then true so the default is false which is not flipped click run all right so the image, the video on the canvas is flipped, but the original video is not. All right, so as you can see here, we can actually manipulate the video content on the canvas as a whole by either flipping it here or because we already draw the image on here, we can also use a function called filter and then change the filters. Let's say we want to do it blurry, put in blur as an argument, and then now, the image on the canvas is blurry, the original image is still the same. But what if we want to manipulate each of the pixels individually on the canvas here? So there are actually two ways that we can do this. One is easier while the other one is efficient. So how about we start with the easier one? First, I want to actually set the width and the height to be 64 by 48, and then I'm going to create another variable called scale Let's set it to 10. And then the size here will be width times scale and then height times scale. 
and then we also need to set the size to be width and height here all right so i have my video here of the size that is 10 times smaller than the canvas next what i want to do is that i want to be able to access each of the pixels inside my video here and i can use a function called get so get gets a pixel or a region of pixels from the canvas get is easy to use but it's not as fast as pixels and pixels is actually the second method that we're going to be using and it returns an array with R, G, B, and A, A being alpha values of the pixel at the given point. At the given point, if you look at the syntax here, we want to provide X and Y coordinates of the pixels that we want. So I'm actually only going to provide X and Y because I don't want a region, I want a specific point. So now what we're gonna do is that, how about we just try it by doing vid.get and then provide the x and y coordinate of this video here how about we do 0 comma 0 and then we print it all right and as you can see here we get a value that is of the size 4 inside a 1d array the first second third and fourth being rgb and alpha value okay so now what we can do is that we can use a for loop right for a loop that goes through the entire width and height of the video stream so we're going to do vid dot vid width i plus plus here and then the nested loop is going to be j less than vid dot height j plus plus and then how about we set a variable called val and val will be set to the function get it has to be vid.get, right? Because we are getting the pixel values inside the video and we're going to provide i and j as the two arguments, i and j. Then these four values, if we want a brightness of the four values, what we can do is that we can, let's, let me show you, use the function called brightness and then provide this as the argument val. And if I click print, click run here, you see a value that is, as you can see here, it's between something around 20 to 30, but the brightness value ranges between zero to a hundred. And what I want to do is that I want to, how about I map it? I'm going to call this new variable C and map it, map what? Map the val variable here between zero and 100 and then give it a value between 0 and 255. Then I want to draw an ellipse and I want it to be at i times scale, j times scale of the scale size here, right? Scale is being 10, right? Because the canvas is 10 times bigger and then I want to fill the color using the value that we map here. Let's click run. All right, something is wrong. It's expecting a number for the first one received an array instead. Let's see. So vid.get. Oh, this has to be brightness. All right. So what we did is that we got the pixel value for each of the location each of the coordinates inside the video stream here. And then we map the brightness value between zero and 255. And we use that value to set as the color inside the fill function here. And then we draw the ellipse on the canvas. You can manipulate this a few different ways. What if we actually want to, how about I set S for size and I map same thing, right? The brightness value between 0 and 100 and then I want to set the size of the ellipse to be how about between 0 and 20 and then I can just do S here all right and as you can see here it is a little bit we need to offset it a little bit so actually we want to put in scale divided by 2 here scale divided by 2 here for the x and y coordinate of the 
circles for the center of the circles, right? All right, so now it is in the center. So this is the easy way of accessing Pixels data from the video, but it is not as efficient. The more efficient way is by using an array called Pixels. So Pixels is an array containing the color of each pixel on the canvas. Colors are stored as numbers representing red, green, blue, and alpha values. So this is the same return values as what we got from the get function, right? Pixels is a one-dimensional array for performance reasons. So what this means is that actually Pixels is a 1D array that contains all the Pixels values of all the Pixels inside the video, meaning that each of the Pixel inside the video has four values. So the size of the Pixels array is the width times height times four. So they also said it here, the Pixels array of a size 100 by 100 is 40,000. All right, and then here, we need to use the load pixels function to call before accessing the pixels array and also update pixels function must be called after any changes are made. All right, so we're not updating the pixels, we're going to be loading the pixels. So first, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to comment this out. All right, so we need to load the pixels, right? And the pixels that we want to load is from this video here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put in vid dot load pixels. All right, let's try to click run. All right, everything is still okay. Then now, how about we print vid dot pixels, and then this should give us the one D array. Okay. So let's look at this. All right, so you see that the size is 12,288, right? Because it starts at, it starts at what? It starts at zero. So zero to two, eight, eight, zero to two, what? Zero to one, two, two, eight, seven, which means there are a total of one, two, two, eight, eight elements. That is exactly 64 times 48 times four. But because the pixels array is a 1D array, but we want to work in a grid structure where we can access the pixels values of each of the pixels by providing just an index of X and Y coordinate. And we can do that quite easily by converting from a 1D to a 2D array structure using an equation Y times width plus X. But because the pixels value has four values for each pixel, red, green, blue, and alpha. We also need to multiply by four. And that is going to return us with the index of the red value for each of the pixels. So for the green, blue, and alpha, all we need to do is that we need to add an offset to the index. We do not want to use this get function anymore, right? So let's comment it out. So what we want is that we want to create a variable called index and index is going to be equal to y which is j times vid dot width plus i all right and then also multiply it by four and then how about we set r to be equals to the pixels 1d array right and provide the index an offset of this is zero i'm going to put that for consistency so r g will be plus 1, b will be plus 2, and then a, which is the alpha, will be plus 3. And to get actually the brightness value or the grayscale value, an easy way to do this is how about we average it by adding r, g, and b, and then we divide it by 3, and then now... Let's actually set this as C, then we can fill C. If I click run now, it should actually do the exact same thing. Nope, um, S is not defined. Okay, so the size is not defined. So we can just do same thing here, right? Let S to be equals to, we want to map C, right? So now C, is the same thing as brightness of val to what? Between zero and 100. And then we want to set it to zero and 20. All right. 
no map of C. What does it say? Ellipse was expecting number for fourth argument. One, two. This is not. Let map of C. How about we print what C provide first? Then let's comment this up. Okay, so we didn't get what we needed. Oh, we need to do vid.pixels. Let's try that. We need this S here. All right. It looks a bit different because I think the values that we get from C here is doesn't actually range between 0 and 100. And to be honest, you don't need to fill it with this C here. You can fill it with the actual color, right? So you can just provide R, G, and B inside the fill function here. All right. So there's so much that you can do with this now that you know how to access a live video from your webcam and then use it on the canvas to create something interesting. So give this one a try.